The elm was once one of our most common trees and was lovingly depicted by our best-known landscape painter, John Constable. But around 40 years ago, they started to die off in their hundreds of thousands. They've fallen prey to Dutch elm disease. One more dying elm disappears from the skyline. This one was felled today in North London. In the end, millions of trees were killed. These days you hardly hear anything spoken about Dutch elm disease. Is that simply because it's been cured or has every elm tree in Britain been killed? So what became of Dutch elm disease? Paul King was a tree surgeon in the 70s. He chopped down hundreds of dead and dying elms. The Forestry Commission in the early days thought that felling would hopefully try and contain it, but I think that idea soon went out of the window. Uh, it was near enough impossible to contain it. It spread so fast. Could you see it in the landscape? Look around now at all the oak trees, the millions and millions of oak trees that are in the landscape now. Imagine then 20 million trees like that disappearing. It was absolutely disastrous. It was one of the worst environmental disasters the UK has ever seen. It's called Dutch elm disease because the early research on it was carried out in Holland. But what exactly is it? Jonathan Hazel used to be the technical director of the Arboricultural Association. In other words, he knows a lot about trees. Jonathan, a dead tree, will it have been Dutch elm that have killed this? Without doubt, that will have been brought down by Dutch elm disease. So what is Dutch elm disease? It's a fungus that's introduced to the tree by a beetle. The beetle doesn't do any harm to the tree, right. but the fungus that's left behind blocks up some of the plumbing in the tree, right. causes the leaves to wilt and die, and then the tree completely dies. Is it the fungus that kills the tree? Funny enough, no. It's the tree that thinks, heck, I don't want this fungus in my system, so it blocks itself. So it's trying to defend itself? It's trying to defend itself, and in so doing, kills itself. The disease killed up to 99% of mature elms in the UK, and it hasn't gone away. The reason we don't hear much about it is that the vast majority of vulnerable giant elms have gone. Saplings survive for a while, but largely because the beetles avoid immature trees. The beetle likes a bark of a certain thickness, trees that are at least 15 feet tall, which means these smaller ones are safe for the moment. These young trees have been cultivated by the man who once had the job of felling dead elms. Paul King now runs a tree nursery and he wants to revive the elm. He took me into the heart of the Essex countryside to a magnificent old elm that's one of the few to have avoided Dutch elm disease. Paul has grown cuttings from this tree and they may be the best hope that fully grown elms could once more be a common sight across the country. Paul, why do you think this tree didn't succumb to Dutch elm disease? Well, there's a feeling amongst some of us that the elm trees have been freely hybridising. So several elms together and all sort of... Breathing yeah. together, yeah. exactly. And we think that this particular hybrid is not attractive to the elm beetle. Why do you think it's worth saving? The younger people watching this never had the chance to see the elm tree in all its majestic glory. Mm. Wouldn't it be great if we could bring that back to them? Well, you don't have to answer that question, really. Just look at that tree and it speaks enormously about English countryside, history, symbolism, strength. And in his nursery, Paul now has trees that are old enough to catch Dutch elm disease, but touch wood, we may have got rid of it, because so far, they haven't caught it. It's early days, but there's real hope. Work done by Paul King and a few others may mean that we can reintroduce the majestic elm back into the English landscape. But it could be a long time before we definitely know for certain whether we've conquered Dutch elm disease or not. <laughs>